Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Private Officer B Radio. I'm your host, Rick McCann, broadcasting live today from Studio A of our Charlotte, North Carolina corporate office. A lot happening, so sit back, strap in, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this edition of the Private Officer B Radio, hosted by me, Rick McCann, founder and CEO of Private Officer International and Armor College and other companies. And we're really happy that you are here. My sidekicks, we're all here in the studio at our corporate office in North Carolina and uh, enjoying some sunshine after some cloudy days, but I'm not going to kick off this broadcast talking about the weather this time. Well, not right now anyways. <laughs> I can't promise I won't do it later on in the day, later on in the broadcast, but weather does play such a, a big part of what we do in the security industry and law enforcement and public safety and fire service and construction and and so much more. Well, this past week, I've been very active myself. There is a sure sign that across the country, things are beginning to open up and uh, some normalcy is in place. I'm not saying everything is back to the way it was before COVID began, because certainly it is not. I had to travel uh, several times out of town this past week, and one of the things I saw for the first time in a good uh, eight or ten months, people traveling, people going out, uh, people enjoying themselves, even going on vacation. Um, during my travels along the interstates, I saw a good number, quite a few campers out. That's a sure sign that spring has sprung. And in fact, by the way, while we talk about that next Sunday, don't forget to turn your clocks ahead. Daylight savings time, you know, that spring forward and fall backwards. It's that time again, next Sunday. But anyways, traveling across the uh, the interstates, up and down um, the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic area this past week, I saw people out there um they had campers and trailers and they had stuff on top of their roof and they were towing boats. And that's a sure sign that people are getting back to enjoying life and going out and taking trips. And it's spring break, uh, spring break where I am anyways, along the Gulf coast and the Atlantic seaboard, the Virginia beach area, uh, lots of spring breakers, students who, uh, you know, I'm sure that they need a break, too. It's been, even though they may, for the most part, been um, doing all of their stuff virtually, it's still, you know, it, you, you're, it's kind of like cabin fever. You just got to get out. And spring break for those college students is that time. And for me, the moment that the thermometer hits 60 degrees, it's summertime for me, and I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to go. I want to be out. I want to be by the water. I want to go to the mountains. I want to, I just, I hate being indoors. I seriously do. I have to have office hours, and I have to be in, in the office, and I have to take phone calls and prepare proposals and, and do uh, training and all that kind of stuff. But, man, anytime I can get out, I'm gone. How about you? What's it like where you're at? Give us uh, some indication how things are changing for the better, hopefully. Send us an email, helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Send us some photos of what's happening in your neck of the woods. Remember, you can also report news 24 hours a day. Send us a promotion of yourself or your coworkers or your employees. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Also, if you want to see all of the breaking news every day, go to our uh, daily news update at privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. 
private officer breaking news at blogspot.com. And for more alerts, go to our website at privateofficer.org, privateofficer.org. A box will drop down, and you'll be able to put in your name, address, breaking news alerts, all of the stuff that's happening, um, training events that might be coming up, and other opportunities. In fact, over the weekend, if you are receiving our news alerts, then you saw several very important news items coming out in the last few days. Coming out of Bakersfield, California, two men, Frankie Ramos, 32, and David Moore, were convicted of attempted murder of a security officer, robbery, and other charges after they tried to rob an internet casino. They fired at the security officer. Four people um, was arrested. Two received life sentences. Two others sentenced to more than 10 years in prison. We released that information on a breaking news as soon as it came in. And another, another unbelievable headline coming out of California as well. 28-year-old woman was arrested for murdering a security officer. Stephanie Valley of L.A., Los Angeles, has been charged with murder. A security officer on duty saw the female um, in a situation where she was stealing some items. Now, he was in his vehicle when he observed this. He got out. He approached the woman. And what did she do? Instead of just giving the stuff back and saying, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, please don't take me to jail. She pulled a handgun on the security officer who we don't know was whether he was armed or unarmed. I'm presuming he was probably unarmed, but he could have been armed. And she murdered him, murdered him right there in broad daylight, out in the open, in front of God and everybody, just killed the security officer for doing his job. Now, sadly, this is the 18th homicide private security officer so far in 20. 21. The L.A. County District Attorney's Office put a $2 million bond on this woman, $2 million bail. And, you know, that's pretty extreme, especially these days when so many areas are going on just a ROR, release on own recognizance. And yet, they really saw the severity of the crime and the necessity of that $2 million. Remember, go to our website at privateofficer.org and sign up for these breaking news. I'm, I'm telling you, if you care about what's happening, if you care about the industry that you're working in, you won't want to miss these breaking news alerts. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other things happening in the news our private citizens, uh, police academy, uh, sponsored by Armor College, and so much more. You're listening to the Private Officer Beat Radio. Don't go away. a very simple thing. It only takes two seconds. We all know we should do it. We all say we do it. But do we? About 35,000 people were killed in motor vehicle accidents last year. More than half were not wearing a seatbelt. A brother, a father, a mother, a best friend. Is it worth it? I lost a sister. Don't let it happen to you and your family. Tell the people you love to buckle up. You wouldn't think the cafeteria would be a scary place. There are 5.9 million kids in the U.S. living with food allergies. It happens to me on the school bus. And a third of kids with food allergies are bullied because of it. Right now, we're working on a cure for food allergies. Until then, there is a cure for food allergy bullying. You. 
Go to foodallergy.org to teach your kid about the seriousness of food allergies. If I'm not at school, I can't get bullied. Food allergy bullying, it's not a joke. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Private Officer Beat Radio. I am your host, Rick McCann. You've got maybe a few hours left. If you're listening to my voice right now on this broadcast, to go and register for the Citizens Police Academy sponsored by Armor College Police. Go to our website at armorcollege, A-R-M-O-U-R, college.org. Sign up right now at the top of the very front page for the Armor College Citizens Police Academy. 15 weeks of great, great learning, and it's absolutely free. Speaking about learning, I had the opportunity to be in Mississippi this past weekend with uh, William Dreschel. He's a deputy sheriff and instructor at the academy and um, school uh, director for Mississippi. We had some really great training. We did some tasers, some use of force, OC, some less lethal, de-escalation. We talked about mental health illness these days. We have a lot happening in our Armor College schools. It is easy for you to participate online or at one of our local campuses, as well as there's really a great opportunity if you want to own your own school. Um, we have an opportunity for you to do that without costing you an arm and a leg. And um, if you want more information, go to our website at armor, A-R-M-O-U-R, college.org, armorcollege.org. Or you can send just an email right now to our point of contact, our POC, Helpdesk at privateofficer.com, helpdesk at privateofficer.com, and they will direct that email to the right people. But we did have a lot of good training there in Gulfport, Mississippi, and we've also done some training recently in uh, several other states. We're heading now to Virginia to do some uh, training and things are opening back up, as I said a few moments ago, just looking at the traffic. TSA even said that they're hiring 6,000 TSA screeners because business is coming back and lots of travelers, and, and we can see it. So uh, that's a good sign. A couple of other things that did make it in the news that I, I do want to mention um, again, it's very important that you you sign up and you get the news alerts and um, you pay attention to what's happening in our industry because if you're going to be out there, you need all of the information that you can get. You need all of the training, all of the experience. You need all everything that you can possibly get to have the upper hand, the upper hand on the bad guys. It's just an unfortunate thing these days um, that you're not safe anywhere. And when you put on a uniform uh, and a badge, it's even less. Also coming out of California last week, a security officer wrestled a weapon away, a firearm, from a man who was shooting at several people. This happened in Visalia, California. A security officer officer downtown responded to a disturbance. He found Alex Salazar, 27, in a confrontation with several people, and then he began firing, and he fired at the security officer. The security officer was able to run up on him, wrestle that gun away, and take him into custody, take him down, and hold him until police got there. How many Security officers today 
could actually do that. He's a hero. I'm trying to find the security officer right now to see how we can uh, award him and congratulate him for a job well done. Also in the news uh, this week, we told you uh, a number of days ago about a security officer at the Security Social Security Administration building. This hap was happening down in Virginia Beach. A man came into the building, and the security officer told him that it was closed to the public. The man uh, seemed to walk out, but he actually came into another building, was, got involved in a gunfire, a gun battle with the security officer who was armed. Uh, the security officer returned fire. He was shot five times. The suspect was shot at least five times. And over the weekend, the suspect succumbed to his injuries. But sadly, the security officer, who was also shot multiple times, is uh, still fighting for his life. And in fact, uh, on Friday, they had to amputate both of his hands because of sepsis where he got uh, blood infection and his hands had to be removed. Very, very tragic. We have already committed to awarding that security officer a Purple Heart. We know him, uh, we know of him, we know how to reach him, and in due time, we will be doing that publicly. So uh, be looking for that as well. Also, uh, unfortunately, in the first 60 days, 60 days in, if you get our news alerts, then you've seen this, the first 60 days has not been good for the private security industry. 67 security officers have died so far in 2021. It's just unimaginable. 18 security officers have been murdered. Two died from gunfire. Five of those officers were shot repeatedly. 38 have died from the coronavirus. Three died in vehicle accidents. Three others died from unknown causes. One officer drowned, and five security officers died on duty as a result of emergencies, medical emergencies. 21 other security officers were shot while on duty, and six still remain hospitalized today. During this time, there were over 30 times when a security officer also used the firearm to defend himself. In at least six of those shootings, police have arrested the security officer and charged them with murder, and currently 19 other shootings are still open and under investigation, meaning that the security officer could face charges at any time. I was telling the class this weekend, if you really think that there's it's no big deal to be a security officer this day, day and age or that there's really no risk. You got another thing coming, another thought coming, because it's, it's very dangerous. A very uh, unusual, strange thing in the news, three different scenarios where security officers found dead bodies over the weekend. Very, very unusual. In Gulfport, Mississippi, a security officer making a welfare check at a room under the requirement of management found two dead bodies um, in the room, a female and a male, believed to be a possible drug overdose. He was not expecting that, obviously. In Houston, Texas, another security officer at a hotel was asked by management to check uh, a room because it was a late checkout. The person had not checked out. The security officer there opened or tried to open the door, but it was locked. The manager um, came with a special security key. They were able to get in. They found a murdered female at that location, and police there had made an arrest. And in New York City, a security officer on patrol in an area going through a vacant building that was open, also found a dead, murdered female wrapped in plastic. Police there made two arrests uh, of suspects, and it's just very, very unusual um, for that many 
dead bodies to be located by private security, but it does happen on a regular basis. Believe it or not, security officers are often the first on scene of many different crimes, and this shows once again that it happened more than people realize. Private Officer Breaking News dot blogspot dot com. Private Officer Breaking News dot blogspot dot com. Go there every day and check out the news. And remember our friends over there at Body Armor USA because we've got what it takes to protect you. Whether you're looking for stab resistant vest, protective clothing, body armor, gloves, we got it all. Body Armor USA. We're coming right back on the Private Officer Beat Radio. Can we be real for a minute? I'm a high school math teacher, and I'm a firefighter. Hey, we're going to have you out in just a minute, okay? I'm a designer. I'm a retired VP in business. And I'm a student. Oh, ah. I'm a mother. I'm a business analyst, and I'm a volunteer firefighter. You thought we just fought fire? Firefighters get trained to do so many things. Right here, right here, right here. Good job, good job. What we do is serious business. Three quarters of the nation's first responders are volunteers. That includes here in Connecticut. And lately, it's been harder than ever with fewer citizens volunteering. From teenage cadets like me, to seasoned veterans like me. So what are you waiting for? You ready to make a difference? Ready to join our team? Your community needs you. We need you. Visit everydayherobt.org or stop by your local firehouse today and take the first step of joining your fire department. My wife and I are spending more time on our computer. It's so convenient. Yeah, but there can be a downside. Right, like buying fake drugs being sold over the Internet. Yeah, we learned the hard way. At the emergency room. Never buy prescription or over-the-counter drugs online from unknown or unlicensed sources, as they are often dangerous fakes. Counterfeits hurt, but you have the power to stop them. Go to www.ncpc.org forward slash get real. Brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice. The Federal Aviation Administration wants you to fly your drone responsibly. Avoid flying your drone near other aircraft, especially near airports. Fly your drone below 400 feet. Always keep your drone in sight. If you see a safety issue involving drones, contact local law enforcement immediately. Fly smart. Fly safe. Have fun. The National Public Safety and Security Institute, an arm of Private Officer International, a think tank. We're asking you to help us think. If you have an idea, you have a suggestion on how we can keep each other safe, how we can keep our employees safe, how we can prevent so many workplace injuries, assaults, and deaths, I'd love to hear from you. Send those recommendations and comments to helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. It's not just a bunch of wasted time. We're making a difference. We're putting together some strong recommendations. These will be going to regulatory boards throughout the country, other groups and associations involving law enforcement, security, and loss prevention. And um, we're going to continue making our business safe. That is always, always, it has always been a goal of Private Officer International. We continue with that model, with that goal and mission. And now we're asking you for your two cents. So send in 
your recommendations, whatever it is that you think needs to be done. We're talking about doing away with single man posts altogether. We're talking about mandatory two-way radios for every officer. We're talking about body armor. We're talking about uh, increasing wages and hiring people more qualified to do certain tasks. One size does not fit all. I understand from the business perspective, we can only pay what we can pay. We can only pay what we afford, can afford. We only can pay the employee what the client is willing to pay. But maybe we should just all become specialists. Maybe we should all be uh, high-end security. I recently had a call. Well, this is a while back, but I, I had a call uh a utility company, you know, you can hire the best and you can hire the worst, the cheapest and the more expensive. Air conditioning, that's in car repair, that's in everything. We Maybe we should become premier high-end security providers. I don't know. Send in your comments, help desk at private officer. Com, help desk at privateofficer.com. We're going to um, be spending the next few months doing some training in uh, some neighborhoods throughout the southeast. If you would like for us to come to your company, contact help desk at privateofficer.com. Help desk at privateofficer.com. We're going to be uh, also announcing coming up probably in the next couple of weeks, annual private officer award program nomination opening dates. If you know of a security officer, a police officer, even yourself, that deserves to be recognized. And who doesn't these days deserve to be recognized? Be looking for that opening nomination date and recommend someone, nominate someone, even yourself. Remember, right now it's not too late to go to our website at armorcollege.org and register for the Citizens Police Academy. It begins Tuesday night at 8 p.m. and continues every week for 15 weeks. We're going to be talking about mental health how it is to become a police officer, how it is to uh, do the job, patrol techniques, use of force decisions, mental health, corrections, the justice system, and so much more. Be sure to sign up for that today. If you're in the metropolitan Charlotte, uh, North Carolina area, and that includes over in the Rock Hill area, Fort Mill, South Carolina, Check out Premier Training Academy in Charlotte, the Premier Security Training. If you need North Carolina PPS or the South Carolina SLED, call our friend John over at Premier Training Academy right now. You're listening to the Private Officer Beat Radio. I've got a few more comments, and I'm coming right back. For some children, America isn't the land of promise. It's a place where every day is a struggle. Because today in America, one in six children lives below the poverty line. For these children, living in poverty means going without. Going without medicine, going without food, going without a warm home, or even a roof over your head. And that's life for nearly 13 million children of all races, all across America. Where will you draw the line and get involved? You can help these children and their families find a way out of poverty for good. And you can make a difference in more ways than you think. Will you help? Go to PovertyUSA.org today. Because one in six children in poverty is one too many. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. What am I doing lying in this casket? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm dead. I got shot. I'm not supposed to be dead. I'm only 17, 
And now I can't see my 18th birthday because I'm a fatal victim of gun violence. My friends, my family, my own mother was devastated. Can't see her son anymore because of gun violence. And everyone's here at the funeral. But before they lay me the rest, there's just one last thing I have to do. How many more of us have to die from gun violence? Let's put a stop to this, because if we don't, the next time it could be your child lying in this casket. already heard that I've been appointed the police chief at a lake um, community in Virginia. I'm very honored to be able to uh, hold that position, the police chief of a very large community. It encompasses three counties and um, along the Blue Ridge uh, Mountain area, and it is uh, it is an honor to be able to do that. Um, Fortunately, in that area, just in the last week and a half, a small town police officer was killed during a traffic stop. So that is, um, you know, another reminder that it doesn't matter if you are in a a retirement community, an upscale community, um, a low scale community, a big city or a small town, um, your life is always going to be on the line when you wear a uniform. And sadly, this um career police officer was gunned down by the passenger not the driver and also in that same community another police officer was shot multiple times um, about a day later and a deputy sheriff committed suicide in that same community Uh, but anyways i am uh looking forward to the challenge to really put something uh together to um, multiple communities and um, I don't know, without going too much into uh, all the details, it it has, um, it's an honor and I'm looking forward to it and we'll keep you uh, abreast of it. Recently, I had a discussion with a person who is at the forks in the road having to make a decision as to whether or not to give up their small hometown community, their way of life, to travel someplace bigger, to put down stakes and roots somewhere else for a better paying job. I often have this conversation with many people in the security industry as well. Unfortunately, as far back as I can remember, and it seems like I'm 100 years old, but I'm only 99, people have been moving from point A to point B, from east to west, north to south, and south back to the north, time and time and time again for job opportunities. It is a struggle for many people to make a living in a smaller community or in a community that doesn't have the type of profession that you want to be in. Uh, A very dear friend of mine many years ago who grew up very close knit family, Italian, never been very far out of the state, more than a time or two. Uh, He married uh, a woman from another state and she became 
very homesick after a number of years, and he had to make a decision. He was at those the crossroads. Do I move to her home state and give up my family, being close to my family and my career, or do I put my foot down and say, uh-uh, I'm staying here, and you are too, as long as you're going to be married to me? That's a hard decision to make. Many people in the security profession and law enforcement and EMS and the fire service all cross those same roads regularly. Another former friend of mine, uh, acquaintance, was a firefighter. And he was in a smaller community, a smaller city, 60,000 population. But he knew that in Northern Virginia, they were paying twice as much as what he was currently making as a firefighter. And he knew that with his skills and his expertise and his dedication and loyalty to the fire service, he could move from small town North Carolina up to the Northern Virginia area, which is a very expensive very first of all, to live in. But it does pay more money, obviously, because the cost of living is so much higher. But he knew he could go up there and make more money. His wife, who was a nurse, would definitely make more money. But they were both from North Carolina. They were both from a smaller area outside of Charlotte. And it was like, it's not that far away, maybe eight hours, ten hours, but a whole different world away when you're leaving your family. And they had to make a decision. And so they had just had a new child and, uh, Both, you know, the wife's folks, parents, and his parents lived close to where they currently lived, and it was a very tough decision. Give up family, give up lifestyle, give up, uh, you know, what I know for something I don't know. Well, they put it off for two years, but they eventually did move to Northern Virginia. I lost track of them. I hope that they're happy. I hope that they're successful but it's not an easy move. Talking with uh, a friend of mine recently, they're at that same crossroad. Do I move to a bigger area that's gonna pay me more? Do I leave my small town, my home life, my family? They're getting older. Everybody's growing up. I'll miss the birthdays. I'll miss the Christmas maybe. I'll miss the holidays. I'll miss just being able to go over and have dinner with my family and friends. Yes, you'll make more money. Yes, there are more opportunities in the bigger cities. Yes, even in private security, someone with five or 10 years of experience could probably go make an extra three or four bucks or maybe three or 400 bucks a week if you moved. As a business owner, I cross those same crossroads often. Do I go a little further? Do I open up another business in another location? Do I expand into another state? Do I expand into another profession? Yeah, there's opportunity to make money. No doubt about it. Yes, there's opportunity to really grow in myself and in my businesses. But is it worth it? Some people do not have close-knit family. So that decision is a lot easier made because they don't have to consider so many other people or any other people. Some people are single. They are free to fly. They want to move to California. That's a mistake. (laughs) They want to move to New York. Florida, Texas, Ohio, wherever it might be, well, no big deal. They don't have to ask their wife, their husband, their family, because there's really not a whole uh, big thing going on. So they're free to fly. You really have to weigh the options. The risk versus rewards. It's not easy to do. In the security industry, you have to look at what your qualifications are. 
if you've only got minimal education and minimal experience, don't think you're going to go to a bigger city and become a manager, a vice president, uh, someone who went from 20000 to 50000 a year. It's going to take work. But on the other hand, if you're someone with education, training, experience, and a lot to offer a bigger, better company someplace else, then, yeah, there might be some big opportunities there for you, and I would consider it. It's not easy to be standing at those forks in the road. I've been there more times than I can count. It's not comfortable. It's not an easy decision. There's so much that you don't know. There's such a big risk. But you have to consider what are the rewards? What will I gain? Well, you might gain a new experience. You might gain that opportunity to move someplace that you really like better than where you came from. You might really make some really great friends in that new location. You might even find the love of your life if you're not already married or or have someone. So risk versus reward is a real thing. All too often, we get too comfortable with where we're at. All too often, we're just hung up in a whole hum kind of lifestyle. We're so, you know, enthralled with the everyday life. We do the same thing at the same time for the same amount of time. We get up, we eat, we go to work, we come back, we go to sleep, we get up, we go to work, we come back. Maybe moving is the right thing for you. How will you know? Well, a couple of things that maybe you need to take into consideration. Family, obviously. Wife, husband, kids. Yeah, you need to definitely consider them. How far are you moving? And what is the benefit of moving to that area? Do you already have a job in place? Do you already have an offer? Are you going someplace that you've never been? You don't even know what's available there? That's risky. But if you already have a well-paying job offer, you already have secured some place to live, maybe you've gone out and taken a look at it a time or two and you really like the area, maybe you've already made some connections, well, that risk is going to be less. Anytime I've made that kind of move, I've always gone out more than a couple of times to see what's in the area. What does it have to offer? What's the job potential? What kind of cost of living do I have? I try to make educated guesses in whatever I do. I can't advise you what's best for yourself. And sometimes I can't even advise myself. It's a crapshoot at best. I know several people, including myself, who have been at those crossroads more than once, more than twice, maybe even more than a half a dozen times. Sometimes we make the right decision, and sometimes we don't. That's going to conclude this episode of the Private Officer Beat Radio. I'm so glad you've been here. Remember, be safe. Be blessed, and we'll see you back here on the next episode.